Joining me now to discuss is Labor Secretary Eugene Scalia. It's great to have you back, sir. Welcome. Kelly, thank you. Good to be with you. So are you surprised by, I mean, it's interesting because I think you were among the folks who said we could be under 10 percent on the unemployment rate by the end of the year at a time a few months ago when that seemed insane. We could be below that point next month. Yeah, exactly right, Kelly. Um, I was projecting a couple months ago that I believed uh, we could get uh, uh, below 10 percent unemployment by the end of the year. That was perceived as uh, optimistic, aggressive. Uh, but um, we're, you know, more or less there right now. Uh, so this is a very uh, encouraging report on the heels of excellent reports uh, for May and June as well. We're ahead of where uh, uh, virtually anybody expected us to be. And as you noted, uh, the July jobs report uh, included a period where three of our largest states, California, Texas, Florida, we're having to put in place some restrictions because there were rising cases and hospitalizations. Yeah. So it was a we were confronting some headwinds, but nonetheless we posted these very good numbers. But let me quickly add, uh, we, we have work to do still. Uh, there are still too many Americans out of work. Uh, we want to support them. We want to get them back to work. There is one major new headwind, and it's the expiration of those jobless benefits. I mean, this is several hundred billion dollars worth of money that was going into the economy that no longer is. We don't know yet what the next bill will include. Do you have any early sense of the impact that's had on the labor market and the economy? Well, uh, the $600 benefit uh, was something that Congress did back in March uh, with the president uh, as we were closing uh, the economy. Of course, we're in a different place now. It was agreed at the time to have that expire uh, at, the, at the end of July. The Republicans, as you know, Kelly, actually have been trying to keep that benefit in place. Uh, it tried to have it in place this week while negotiations continued. The Democrats uh, declined to leave it in place for this week, stopped a motion that would have kept it in place uh, while negotiations were, were ongoing. I think long term, as uh, important as it was to have a very substantial benefit when the economy was closed, I think with the economy opening the way it is, uh, that, that number is too high. You know, in, in Massachusetts, on unemployment with a $600 a week benefit, you're getting $75,000 a year on an annualized basis. In Oregon, it came out to $65,000 a year yeah. on an annualized basis. So we, we, we'd like to see more stimulus. Uh, we don't think that that benefit uh, over a long period of time is, is the right way to, to, to yeah, deliver it. Yeah, it's a generous benefit, but again, it was intended to be. And we're in this odd period now where the spread of COVID has been worse this summer than anybody thought. But at the same time, the economy has more momentum than even a couple of weeks ago we might have imagined. I want to ask you about the composition of the labor market, the fact that the unemployment rate for blacks is about 14 percent, 14 and a half for Hispanics, 13 percent. There's been a lot more focus lately on this employment gap and on the wage gap. Um, we have congressmen calling for it to be added to the Fed's mandate to narrow this. We have uh, Joe Biden talking about making this an important part of the Fed's accountability in the future. Um, what do you think should and can be done to narrow these gaps? Well, Kelly, I want to underscore uh, how inclusive uh, President Trump's economy was uh, through February when the virus came. Uh, it's not just that we had an extraordinary number of jobs being created, 7 million since he took office, or unemployment that was at a 50-year low. Uh, it was also an economy where we saw all-time lows in unemployment for African Americans, Hispanics, and we saw rising wages for, uh, particularly for those at the lower end of the wage, gap, or, or, or wage scale. So that was an economy that was delivering incredibly well for African-Americans, Hispanic-Americans, and we're, and we're going to get back there. That is the goal. The same policies that delivered that uh, uh, of uh, uh, a light tax burden, eliminating unnecessary regulations, that's what's going to help those populations more than any other thing. Yes, the African-American uh, unemployment number did, did come down 0.8%, uh, 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 which is a you know, good reduction. Uh, we, but there's work to do on that front, too. I think a lot of those workers were among the, the last hired and sometimes the, uh, the, the last brought in or among the, the first that unfortunately get laid off. Uh, but we do see people coming back to work now in record numbers. And I think that number is going to continue to go down 
along with the unemployment rate for other populations. The final question, and it's more on the inflation side, you know, let's talk about wages more broadly. What do we see in this report? And you guys also do the CPI, the PPI reports. Those levels have been extraordinarily low lately. I mean, there's certainly no inflation pressures right now. But on the wage side of things, are we seeing any evidence that there might be some shortages or, or labor pressures developing? As odd as it seems to ask at a time with so much unemployment, what, what signals do we have there? It's a good question, though, because the economy is it's so dynamic right now. Changes that might have played out over a longer period of time are, are happening in some cases in a more uh, compressed period. Um, the numbers that we've put out would indicate that uh, wages are higher now uh, than they were a few months ago, Kelly, as you know. But that's just a reflection, I think, of the composition of the labor force, uh, that it was lower wage jobs that were lost. Uh, that's why that $600 a week benefit ends up being a bit of a distortion. Uh, because it's the lower wage jobs that ended up being lost. Uh, I don't think we're seeing any signs at this point of inflation on the wage side. All right. Secretary Scalia, thank you for your time today. Thank you.